good, everybody? It's your boy, Ed Blair, the one and only Ed Blair, rocking with Third Coast Avenue, where we plug or you plug. Passions are relentless. I mean, you could have been a hoe or maybe a hoe apprentice. You a lady, not a thought. Some niggas don't know the difference. You a black queen, no trap queen. I know your vision. Independent, no state check. I see you winning. Education and dedication complete your mission. Kendrick told you about Keisha, Tammy, Shireen. Glad you kept up with your morals. Don't go through the same pain. You the company you keep and always. What up, though? This your boy, Pro of Daddy, man. You rock with the Third Coast Avenue show, man. Where you pull up, we pull up, man. And I got a camera to original with me today, man. I got Ed Blair. What's up, my guy, Ed? So, man. All right, man. I can't complain, man. So I'm glad I caught up with you, man, to do this interview and shit, man. So watch, man. Tell us a little bit about you, man. Um, how you got into music and where you from and everything? All right. So I was born and raised in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. Single parent home. All right. Mom raised me. I uh, started rapping when I was probably like seven or eight years oh, old. Oh, yeah? <laughs> How'd you get into rapping? Who was you listening to? Um, I got into it. She bought me my first karaoke machine, <laughs> and uh, I figured out how to loop the end of songs and make it into an instrumental. Oh, so yeah, I had the dual cassette tape. Oh, thing yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, I just so then I just started. Uh, I, I wasn't rhyming, I ain't gonna lie, but <laughs> I, I just figured out how to somewhat piece something together and make it sound somewhat good. Okay, and then I would always like play her the tape because I used to record over stuff. Yeah. Paper in the top of the tape. <laughs> then I'll play it to her and she'll just be listening to it and she'll be looking at me like, I ain't really jamming because you ain't rhyming. Right, right, right. And she was cut for Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was ruthless. Woo! She gave you no mercy. But uh, that's pretty much how I got into it at first. Okay. But I didn't start taking it serious till high school, until I was oh. like 16. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I used to be in a group called uh, The Heartthrobs. The Heartthrobs? Yeah, it was me. Uh, Zach Bowen and Rose Sinatra. Um, but y'all was R&B? Nope. Oh, yeah, rap. Rappers. Okay. Yeah. Like, back then, people didn't want to rap. So uh -huh. it was a good time to be a rapper. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. We was, we was, like, one of, like, five people in high school that would pass out mixtapes on CD. Okay, and okay. Perform at the school auditorium. Man, the school was letting y'all do that shit. That's yeah. still, that make you a winner in my book. The yeah. school let you do that. And then, um, like back then, like everybody didn't have access to a studio, yeah. so we used to record ourselves at uh, Zach's mama crib. Okay, and uh, it was crazy, man. It was a good time, though. Yeah, know? that's when Drake first came out. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, for you, yeah, that, 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 yeah. What year you graduate? I graduated in 2010. Right oh, I spoke at my graduation. Oh, you part of that group? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah, I do remember that. I'm like. Yeah. Oh, I ain't gonna come to the zoo. I remember seeing that. He got you pop up. I was blew away. I Came remember that. Boss too. Yeah. He shut the whole city down. Shut the whole city down. Stadium drive. Could nobody get through here. Uh, K College. They took the goalposts off the football field so that what? the helicopters could land. Oh wow! And then uh, they had snipers everywhere. Damn. Yeah, they weren't playing at all. They weren't playing for sure. So you said um, you got into rapping and took it serious in high school. Mm -hmm. um, with this group, how many projects or songs did y'all put out? Um, so, as DRV, we did a mixtape called Training Camp. That was the only one. Okay. As the Heartthrob, we did an EP that had like four songs. Mm -hmm. But we was performing all the time, though. So we would do DRV songs and Heartthrob songs. And then individually, we all had products too, projects, too. Okay. Um, so we was pretty versatile with it. Oh, okay. So when did you uh, break apart and go separate and start doing your own thing? Man, you know, we was all friends. So, yeah. You know, we had our personal issues. So right. I say we even broke up and got back together so much, I can't even keep count. We said this. Fuck it. I got to me. <laughs> but uh, as a solo artist, I would say my I didn't start, you know, doing my own thing until probably after high school. So okay. Like once we graduated. All right, all right, all right. I can see that. I can see that does work with more free time on your hands. You can take it serious or whatnot. Like, like I, I did go to school for a hot second. I did college for a year just yeah. to keep my mom happy. But yeah. then I just was like, I want to rap. Yeah, I want to Surprisingly, this. she supported it because she actually, you know, supports the music because I'm good at it. Oh, okay. So she just, she was just like, that's what you want to do. I support it. Mm -hmm. She was like, but you know, before I leave here, I do want you to go back and get a degree because I didn't go finish my degree. Gotcha. 
I, I plan to do it. But right now, this is what. I'm this is what it is. Okay. And what it is right now. So, how many projects are you in right now? How many? How many songs? How many projects? What you got? So, Ed Blair has two albums. Okay. My debut album came out in 2017. The Understudy. Right. Understudy. Uh, that one is classic. So okay. I want to talk about that one. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. I got some heavy hitters on it. So I got Big Rue, he's from Atlanta. He did a lot of poetry on there. Um, Timo from Goody Mob is on there. Okay, I know so that. So those are two Dungeon Family connections. Yeah, yeah. And then I had uh, Ed Genesis from my hometown on now there. I heard, yeah, I've heard of Ed Genesis. Uh, just recently someone told me. Yeah. I'm not front camera, I don't really be knowing, but little names keep popping up and stuff. Yeah, that I'm a legend with. in our parts. Yeah. I feel like he don't get the credit he deserves. Why is that? Younger, younger artists don't really pay homage to the older artists. I yeah, mean, but if you think about it, he kind of like he put a lot of spotlight on Cal Music. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. in the '90s and such too. Well, I don't know about the '90s, but, but like early you know, 2000s? Like the 2000s, he did. Like he, he went on 106 and Park, did the freestyle. On oh, he was on 106 and Park. Yeah, did the Sucker Free Cipher or MTV Sucker Free Freestyles when he used to do that. Yeah, he did that. Couple things he did. Damn, I didn't know that. I, I would have never knew that. I always make sure, you know, like when I see him doing something, I, you know, I beat him up. Um, I had DC on there, Candace Lavender. Mm -hmm. um, she's pretty dope. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, production wise, it was all at home, oh, except okay. for one producer. Um, so Big D, which is one of my homeboys, he did the bulk of that album. Joe Lewis from Kalamazoo as mm -hmm. well. Uh, he's in Atlanta now, but he produced on there with me. Um, I read more my A. Hold on, you make beats as well? I orchestrate. Oh, you orchestrate. So okay. basically, I'll, I'll break it down because a lot of people like what you do. Yeah, what does that mean? So, some of the songs that are sampled on my album, mm -hmm. I pretty much like, I know how to see sounds, I guess you can say. I can listen to something and the pick, like, pick it apart and then put what I heard in order. Oh, you have um, it's kind of like know. photographic memory. It could be. I so meaning know. you can identify, so you can hear a sound and know exactly what key that is, something like that. Or you know exactly what strings you need to recreate yeah. a sound. Yeah, that's pretty dope, man. I know. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I don't. Man. I want this some really good shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> but uh, so you technically can remake any beat, mentally. and change its cadence where it can be your beat now yeah and then it's like oh that's it, dope man that's real dope and then i'll reach out to the producer that do the physical work and i'll say like this minute marker i heard such and such i want this to go here the next minute marker i heard this i want this to go there then they'll go put my vision you know to the track and make it official and then when they send it back you know, I'll tell them if it's not right, but for the most part, like 90% of the time, they make exactly what I saw. Mm. Like, Damn. Yeah, yeah that's cold, cool, man. That's why I write the quickest 16s, though. Like, if I could really buy for something or it goes how I wanted it to go, like, I, it don't take Yeah, yeah you already know what I need, mean, yeah. But um, that's the first album. And then Faye, she's featured on there as well. I ain't want to leave her out. Okay. Um, she's from Cajun. Right. Uh, I met her at Put Up or Shut Up. She had What's Put Up or Shut Up? Um, it was an open mic that they used to have on campus. Oh, okay. And uh, people would go there, rap a cappella, sing with acoustic guitar. Damn. Poetry. Why they stop that? That sounds dope. I don't know. Uh, they used to do it at this place called The Mix. Mm. Um, oh, I'm familiar with The Mix. Oh, that's what they used to do there. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't know that's what they did. I, I used to just meet people and shit and be drinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'd be partying. That was the concept of it. Yeah. But at the same time, you'll meet some dope ass locals. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It okay. was pretty dope there. You know, it was a community, which I liked because mm -hmm. a lot of people always, oh, the city don't mess with me. Duh. I was like, it ain't that. Mm -hmm. You just don't go to nothing. True. True. I mean, like. You got to know where the circles is running. It's doing the music. Right. And they embraced everybody, too. Like, you could be the hood, so the hood nigga. I, I freestyle and you can rap acapella they support you in that thing like mm. it wasn't oh this is strictly boom bap like we don't tolerate trap rap it wasn't nothing like that oh okay I love that. 
I mean, just don't come in here fucking up the vibe on campus. And yeah. Shit. Okay, I get it. All right. But, and so the next project, what was you had? Uh, Zoomatic. Zoomatic. And the inspiration behind that uh, was Illmatic by Nas. Correct. Nas I, I see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you look at the album cover, I used one of my baby pictures like he did. Yeah. And then in the backdrop is Kalamazoo. Oh wow. A transparent photo of Kalamazoo. Okay. Okay. I get it. I get it. That's dope, yeah, man. That one. Uh, it was a shorter album. It had like 11 songs on it. Um, I had Big Room on that one as well. Mm-hmm. And then I had uh, Mickey Fax on that one. I'm familiar with Mickey Fax. He was very popular out there in uh, NYC. In fact, um, it was like the early 2000s. I think he ended up getting like a uh, an endorsement deal with Honda or something yeah. like that. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. And he was a uh, class of 09 for the double. Freshman oh, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he a paralegal too on the side? I don't know. I, I think he knows the legal, the law a lot. I, well. He did a um, freestyle, um, and he rapped about fixing credit, and did another one about law. Yeah, I, you know, that's one collab I'd like to see one day is Mickey Fax and Jadena. Okay, that would be dope. He, I feel like he's versatile enough to work with anybody. Yeah. Yeah, he's real cool. I mean, we have personal conversations. Uh-huh. Like, oh, you went up to NYC? Uh, not for that, but oh. we could get into that. Okay. Um, so I did this show at the Kill Bar in Brooklyn. Okay. Um, I went to New York for two days. Um, the first night I performed here. The second night uh, I went to Hot 97 for a meet and greet. Mm-hmm. DJ enough. Mm-hmm. Now at the performance. His team, they call it the Heavy Hitters. Like I know DJ man. Heavy Hitters and Fat Fingers and all of them. I'm familiar. Oh, okay. See, yeah, I, I bumped into him in Brooklyn, actually. Yep, Fat Fingers was that <laughs> show. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't know that he was Wendy Williams' DJ on the Wendy Williams Once upon show. a time, yeah. Oh, he currently was at the time? At the time. Oh, okay. Guess, yeah. But um, there was a showcase for them. And then we went to Hot 9 um, to play music for enough. Yeah. Which was pretty dope. Now, I made sure I went live every day that I was there. Cause you know, I wanted people back home to, to, to see, see like, look, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm out here <laughs> putting over the zoo. You see me, New yeah, York, uh, M- Michigan, we here. Damn, man, so much took place. Like, I saw so many different things while I was there. Um, I stayed in a brownstone, that was pretty dope. I saw Queens, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, yeah, yeah. I lived in Manhattan, that's yeah. where Hot Nine is at. Mm-hmm. It was crazy, man. I wanted to move there. I was gonna quit working. <laughs> yeah, I just came for a rent. Man, yeah, boy, gentrification tearing their ass up right now. Yeah, street food was dope. Um, yeah, I'm definitely. I'm going back again. Actually, uh, I'm gonna be on live from the headquarters with DJ Premier. No, live from the headquarters. That's for a DJ Premier show. Yeah, I'm gonna be on Shade Four or Five with him. Okay, okay, okay. That's dope. Yeah. Well, you're making some connections. I see, man. <laughs> yeah. Outside of home, yeah. I wish I had more connections within my hometown. Yeah, but, you know, I've got to expand in order to. For sure, up. for sure, yeah. definitely. I can see how that is. And then I got a single, uh, "What We Do Remakes," featuring Gigi. Which oh, that's is, currently. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's actually Zach Bowden's little sister, mm. uh, the dude I was in the group with. Mm-hmm. But um, she's pretty talented. Now the crazy thing is, is she don't really want to be an artist. Mm. But she's good at singing. Yeah. And then it's like, that's the song where I got almost 50,000 streams right now. And it's like, I'll be letting her know, like, we do doing the crazy uh, numbers. You're going to have to put out some more. You might have to throw on some more hooks. Just <laughs> trick her into a couple of hooks. Yeah, but she, uh, she's still in high school, though. So you okay. Mind, probably like, you know, right, she ain't thinking about that. But right. it's crazy, though. She's going to be a legend without even trying to be a legend. Because if that goes gold, she get a plaque, and I get a plaque. Right, right, right. There's another chick I keep hearing about. In Kalamazoo, that does hooks. So I can't remember her name exactly. Anaya. Anaya. I'm thinking about Anaya. Yeah, I've Anaya Michelle or something. Yeah, yeah. I reached yeah. out to her before. Yeah, Hopefully, yeah, we can yeah. make something happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hit her up before too. She got a, a good, good price on hooks and uh, verses, all that shit, and all of that. Yeah, she pretty solid. It's a shit. lot of talent back home. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, I, mean, I got a lot of people working all over the spectrum out that way too, man. A lot of people like crap over each other, but you know, I'm open and I, I work with locals. So. Now, are you familiar with some of the Battle Creek talent like yourself? A couple. A couple. Okay, okay. Not as many as I probably should know. Oh, okay. Um, 
couple hundred or yeah. something. Yeah. Well, she's in the zoo a lot. She goes back and forth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely try to learn with her. But outside of music, me and her are cool. Like, okay. If she ever wanted to talk about something, she can. You know, there's an artist here you remind me of. And he was in the cipher. If you're not familiar with my third goes out hip hop, I watch both of them. Oh, you watch both of them? Yeah. So did you see the dude, the uh, Allah? Okay. Yeah, his yeah. real name, uh, James McGee. He's pretty. He's pretty dope. He's about your caliber of rapper. I can tell from how, um, you know, from some of the music you, like, you let me hear before, though. I can tell that's somebody you probably want to be interested in working with around here. Yeah, I see it because um, what you say, LB. Oh yeah, chop, yeah, chop, yeah. chop, chop, chop. Yeah, because. Yeah. Uh, Steve's that directed his yep. video did my documentary and my first video. Oh, okay. Um Bangfield is somebody I work with. <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> yeah, he wild boy, man. Shout out Bangfield, man. He wild, you a wild boy. Have I met anybody else? Mm-hmm. I, I think I probably have met people in the zoo but didn't know they were from here. Mm-hmm. It's possible. Well, you know, another good thing that I, I made sure I did in that cipher was when they were rapping, I did the uh the triple layer overlay of the character mm-hmm. repeatedly. I also threw up their name and their Instagram handle on the bottom of that. So, you yeah. know, if you ever wanted to get a hold of any of them artists, their name is definitely right there. They're always on the gram. You know what I'm saying? That's if they want to work, they definitely willing to work, bro. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And some of them be even willing to do videos and shit too, though. Which brings me to how many videos do you got? You do videos out here too, don't you? Um, so we got the make money video. Uh huh. But I put the short version up because I I didn't have a chance to go to Atlanta and shoot with uh, Poem Fifth and Timo. Okay. But I might still do it and just call it like the album version. Yeah. Album um, version, extended version. I have an animated video um, with me as a cartoon. <laughs> and it's called okay. Cry Clean. Yeah. Uh, that has my friend uh, Sunshine Pedro featured on it. Okay. And then um, YouTube just verified my channel and they categorized the videos on their own. So I don't know if you would consider what they consider a music video. Yeah, they verify videos? Yeah, and they categorize them for you. I didn't know that. Wow, got, that's like, deep. Footage of me at uh, House of Trees, like, I'm for me on them album, too? Yeah. And they categorized it as a music video. And I was like, well, I guess you could call it that. Wow. So if we count it all, I'd say roughly like 10. Okay, that's still solid. Like 10, <laughs> 10 is a solid number out here. With a document. Yeah, yeah shit. that's more than a whole lot, though. If you think about it, though. But so shout yeah. out to Skino Films. He did most of the Okay, work. yeah, definitely shout out Skino Films. Man, I've been seeing him working for a minute too. Yeah, he in Atlanta now. That's yeah, 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 yeah. So which brings me to another good question. Um, in terms of the music and the brand and the products, which uh it's another good thing with the brand. Um how far do you want to take this music as far as like let's say five years from now, what else do you want music to take you to? Since it's been a decade, even though it don't feel like it, he is a blur. And I'm only 27, right. so I don't want folks to think I'm old. Right. Uh, I'm at a point where I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be with it. Right. As far as a local artist. Yeah. Goes. In yeah. terms of where it's going, you're hitting the markers that says, hey, I'm boom, boom, boom. And, you know, it didn't happen as fast as I wanted it to because, you know, I'm, at 16, I'm like, I'm about to do this, I'm about to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but now I'm 27 and everything that I saw then is happening so mm. I'm at a point where I'm like everything that's happening now is happening when it's supposed to so okay. I'm just gonna take it day by day whatever I get out of it that's what it was meant to be gotcha. but I don't want to be looked at as the guy that oh is that bad boy used to just be. rap his ass off yeah, he and used to be <laughs> Woo, that is the worst thing ever to be a used to be Man, but, let me um, tell you, I know so many of them. Where I'm, where where I wanted to take me I five would say, years from now, yeah. I'm gonna do the Air Bla- the Ed Blair podcast. Okay. So I want that to pop off based off of the artistry. Hopefully, everybody converts from the music to the podcast. Oh yeah. Um, I already have merchandise, so right. I want that to take off as well. Um, so www.diversitysquadcollective.com mm-hmm. is where everything is for sale. Um, I want to be in a position where I could do a partnership with a major label and not have to be on a recording contract. So you mean like a distribution deal yeah. or some sort? Yeah, because I heard this story from Dame Dash and uh, Biggs, and they said that each one of them put up three hundred thousand dollars, went to Def Jam, told them to either match the offer or put up a million. 
that's what you're gonna think. Gave him a mil instead of just the 900000 And uh, that's how Rockefeller got started. And the wow. first album was um, uh, Reasonable Doubt by Jay. So that's how they did it? They came with their own money and they were cool with that? Yeah. That's deep. I didn't even know you could do that. That was an option. And Master P, his story, um, they didn't think that they were gonna, no limit would sell like that. Yeah. It was down south, so you know, they think southern niggas can't rap. But he was so you didn't think he was gonna pop the way he did, so they, what did he get? He got a, um. Same kind of like thing. A, yeah. Um, same Distribution kind of thing. in the 80-20, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay. And they don't even do that no more. The last person I think that got that was uh, Birdman with Cash Money. Yeah, they do not do nowhere near that. That's Which, we started owning stuff. Yeah, people started records. to see the bigger picture. I mean, in terms of really, if you think about it, though, the internet has even the playing field so well for everyone you that you don't, really yeah, you don't really need a record deal to what? To record in the studio, to get it mastered, to shoot videos? Right. Hell no. What you really need a record deal is for money to book these huge ass uh, venues. venues and music festivals and stadiums, and arenas, but or even do a world tour if need be. But if you think about that, too, like... If you get a booking agent, like once you built that fan base to where people are uh, requesting to see you and stuff, and they got the promoters reaching out, you can just get you a booking agent and still do them kind of numbers. Like Chance the Rapper, for example, mm. he's not on a major label, he's doing it all in house. He's still independent? I thought he signed by now. Wow. But that's just proof. Booking agent. Some people don't even be having a manager, they just get a booking agent. And they just do it all through a booking agent. And mm. they make their money off of uh, merch and their streams. Which reminds me, you got merch as well, don't you? Yeah, the website, www.diversitysquadcollective.com. Diversity Squad Collective.com? The Varsity Squad. The Varsity Squad, okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. Um, everything you can think of hoodies, long sleeve t shirts, regular t shirts, onesies, uh, towers. <laughs> they got the onesies. <laughs> accessories. Oh, uh, yeah, discriminating. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I got some fly models that. Uh, did the pinups so okay yeah. all right you solid for real solid man. Be, man definitely i invest my own money nobody give me nothing yeah. it feels good that way but at the same time it can be a hindrance expensive yeah. real expensive especially if you got like a family and you well do you have kids i got two step kids okay fiance all right, congratulations. I didn't know that, man. Yeah, for sure. I didn't even know that. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. she tried to stay low key, but she's actually a part of my business. That's good. So, Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. Cool. She's like a co owner of that, and uh, she might start adding designs later. So mm. I would definitely be on the lookout for some of her stuff. So, being that you're well informed with how this works, I don't know if you know, but you just put me on a lot of information to some things that I wasn't even familiar with myself. <laughs> Do you ever see yourself one day maybe managing artists? I was actually told that I should, like, you know. I think you should. Me to, he asked me to consider managing a couple of people that I'm cool with. Mm -hmm. uh, like Tay Bull, for example. Right. And I told him, I was like, it wouldn't feel right because I'm not where I want to be as an artist. Mm -hmm. And I know that not to say that I would purposely like hinder somebody from growing. Right. But but it's still profitable for you though, is what I'm saying. I mean it might be, but I feel like the way I'm doing it now might be more beneficial to the city as a whole. Yes. It would be beneficial to the city as a whole. But if you expand outside of your own city and manage artists from let's say Battle Creek, Lansing, Jackson, Muskegon, Ben Harbor, Grand Rapids. I mean I'll say once I'm in a position as an artist to where like, okay, I'm making money off my music, my mm -hmm. podcast is thriving, mm -hmm. my merchandise is selling, and I'm producing content because I do want to get into making movies, correct? And stuff yeah, like that. and um, you know, because you need seven streams of revenue income in order to be wealthy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So once I got my seven streams together, that's what reminds me. <laughs> that reminds me of a meme I read on Facebook one time. I mean, it's like in Michigan, in order to make it in Michigan, you need like two jobs and a little bit of fraud on the side. Basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. But once I get like solid financially, I feel like then I will be able to put my all into helping other artists. Yeah. Um, but that's why I mentioned the partnership thing, because I kind of want to make the Varsity Squad Collective 
into a label mm -hmm. with major label distribution. Ooh, now that would be great. But what I want to do is bring the locals on first. Mm -hmm. The ones that have a buzz for it. Right, right. right. So sort of cool. the money on absolutely, it. absolutely. It's business. Right, but you would know, let's say as, as managing them, you would know um, where they would get shows and you'd book them for those shows and they'd make money whether... Because what I would do, um, like let's say, you know, I got the bread and everything going good. I plan to have multiple properties too and get into real estate. Mm -hmm. What I would do is I would build a recording studio from the ground up. Yeah. And it would just be strictly business, clean atmosphere. I would move drugs and all that. In right, there. right. And I would just do lyrical boot camps with artists that I want to sign. Like I bring in legendary artists that I work with, ones that are like really super lyrical, like a Royce the Five Nine, mm -hmm. Slaughterhouse type. Yeah. And I just put them up to these crazy challenges and just be like, see where they at with this. An airplay version of making the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, okay. But once I, you know, I do that for them, see where they at, and then you know, I would make them start up their own business. That way, they're not solely dependent on money off music. Gotcha. And you know, I would help them see the light, think clearly, and probably offer therapy too to all my artists. <laughs> I would give them therapy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't get no health insurance as a rapper. So. No, you don't. You don't. People just see it and think, oh, I'm going to be a rapper, I'm a millionaire, I can get all this stuff. It's like, yeah, but you got to pay that back. Definitely, you got to pay that back. That <laughs> and then you go crazy trying to adjust to the life. So I just want to, if I bring on artists, I want to care about their well-being as well as change their life. For right, for, for right. Better. You know, I heard Snoop Dogg say something like that about when he signed with uh, Master P and whatnot. He said Master P took care of all his artists. Yeah, and he, he had like the 30 something artists, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, and he, he bought out the contract and shit. That's crazy. Yeah, because remember he was on Death Row, Pop yeah. Guy, then he folded. Yeah, and then he did it. He bought out Snoop and showed Snoop the ropes and how to do his books and whatnot. And No Lemon was an independent label. That's what's so crazy. He, what Master P did that was a genius is he bought ad space in all the major magazines and made it. You know, he had spreads for all his artists and their albums. So every major magazine had a spread for No Limit. Wow. Yeah, at one point, they had 100 albums out at the same time. Yeah. Wow. But that was like a ad space, though. And putting it right next to some, a major. Yeah. That was genius. How much would something like that even cost? God, God really. you know, like, Not even a magazine. You got to hit all the websites now. Yeah, yeah. Now, then you got magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of defeat the purpose now, I feel like. No, nah, I mean, shit. Because ain't nobody really clicking on, like, I don't know. I mean, some, some websites still get a lot of, a lot of uh, traffic, you know? Like, yeah. for me, uh, during the huge internet downloading phase, um, I used to go to, like, eight different music websites. I used to go to hotnewhiphop.com, hiphopdx, hip hop game. Yeah, uh, what's yeah, it called? Was Two Dope Boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I went through a lot of different websites for music. I did too. I used to always want to be on them sites. Yeah. I remember I used to always like stalk and figure out the emails for them blogs. Yeah. And always yeah. send them music. It got to a point where they started blocking my emails. Damn. Damn. But hey, I mean, hey, hey, but that, that means that you was hitting the right part somewhere. You was hitting yeah. the right people. I was young, you know. Yeah. You was hungry. Was, Nothing wrong with that. I'm still hungry. Yeah. It's not ass hungry. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, though. So yeah, that project, um, what are the other, you said those are the two projects you got? The two albums and then the one single. And oh, then I'm single. working on my third album right now, actually. Okay, uh, what's that called? It's going to be called The Book of Edward. The Book of Edward. And it's going to be a two disc album. Okay. And then uh, the first half of the album is going to be dedicated specifically to Ed Blair, the artist. Mm -hmm. And it'll just be songs, you know, related to what Life. I'm going through as an artist. Yeah. Then the second half of the album is going to be dedicated to Edward, like the personal stuff that I'm dealing with. Okay. Because, you know, people make it seem like the artist's life is all good to glamour. And, you know, for some it is, but for those of us that are independent, still mm -hmm. got a 9 to 5 and still got to put our own money in for sure. this thing, 
we, we got a little bit more challenge. Yeah. But I'm dealing with that stuff privately as editor. Mm. So a lot of people don't see that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, this dude yeah. out here doing it. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to shed light on both and then and bring it together. And then to touch a little bit on that topic, though, that's kind of where music is at sometimes. It almost makes you feel like you have to look a certain part to be a successful rapper, but that's not necessarily true because there's already several proven models, like one you said in particular, Chance the Rapper, which right. you don't see wearing a whole bunch of gaudy gold chains and jewelry, or um, like, you know, extravagant things, but he's well talented and he's well paid actually for what he's doing um, independently as a musician. And that's why a lot of people gravitate towards him because he's not scared to be himself. Comfortable within his own skin. So crazy is that he used to be Drake. Yeah, Drake used to be that person. And then you know, people get to a certain status, and then things change for him. You know, start popping, boom, boom, and he's <laughs> on I mean, but do you think? <laughs> do you think you should change though? I mean, change I mean, is determined as only if it's for the, only if it's for the better. Okay. So like business wise, yes, change if it makes sense. Like, right. If it's creating genera generational wealth, putting you in a position to be set for life, right? You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's not enough room for everybody in this hot air balloon. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I mean, I even looked at some some stuff I found out about rappers mm -hmm. who, in the past, were faking it till they make it, and they actually made it off faking it. Yeah, you know, alive. and one being that I just watched an interview I think where Gucci said. Migos originally was his artist and people weren't respecting them the way that they should have because of the things they were rapping about they physically didn't have. Yeah. And then at the time he said he started giving them gold chains like here. Then, Wear these and rap these songs, ready? And, and it did a lot for their brand. Because Which is why a lot of people go out and they buy like buffs and then they go get like the album. Mm -hmm. And then they get the Cuban links. Mm -hmm. Like you could tell that song was that real. Right, I'm not gonna spit on them, <laughs> but you know, for for the uh, for the artist, and you're doing these videos, you know, that's a huge part of the brand. I think, depending on the type of music that you're doing in your genre, you, I mean, you look I feel, like, I feel like it's a gimmick that people are living because mm -hmm. when you meet these people in real life, total opposite of what you see on camera. Yeah, and then it's like. Whoa. Like, Damn, this I thought he's so dope. Like, for example, <laughs> uh, I can give you a great example. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched the Boondocks, but Gangsta Delicious. Yeah, I used to watch Boondocks, <laughs> Gangsta Delicious. I was just thinking about that. Like, he's probably going to say Gangsta Delicious. Yeah. yeah, that was a perfect example of artists being something that they're not and living a total double life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see any. Um, That's why I did this song. Long term to that. Nah. Those people fall off quick. Like right. they get a buzz for like ten minutes, and then after that, they so they so do what they do, then they fall off the face of the earth. Next thing you know, they don't love hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't knock love hip hop though. No, I've no. seen two artists so far from Love and Hip Hop became very extremely large artists. One being Cardi B, the other being that girl from Dominican Republic or Cuban. Uh, to hear you. Uh, from Love and Hip Hop Miami. Oh, the one she Yeah, was. she was the she called herself Afro Latina. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's like an international star now. That's where it's at for yeah. international success. Like yeah. when I charted on iTunes, it was actually international that I charted. What? Yes, I was number thirteen in like Turkey. In Turkey? Yeah. Man, it seems like you gotta research Turkey now. I would have been <laughs> full of steam. Who's the hottest artist in Turkey right now? I mean, I yeah, I need to collab with him, 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 and him. And like <laughs> Uh, what's crazy is I was above Ariana Grande mm. and a couple other. Who was the other one? I forget who the other artist was. But the fact that I your prior or the single, the single. Oh, the single. That means you had something there. You got something special. Yeah. So I'm gonna definitely put that single on the third album too. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Well, Sounds like we, we working, man. All right, so cool, man. Again, man, we're going to wrap this up. Why don't you tell the fans back at home, man, where they can find your music, your social media outlets, and where we can also get some of your merch. All right, so uh, Facebook, The Notorious Blair. 
um, same on Instagram, and then Twitter is just Notorious Blair. Um, my merchandise is on my website, www.diversitysquadcollective.com. And then um, my music is on Apple, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon, iHeart, Pandora, um, pretty much everywhere. And then YouTube as well. Uh, feel free to subscribe there too. And then um, be on the lookout for the Ed Blair podcast. <laughs> Coming podcast real soon. Well. I'm going to be there. And then, you know, my co host, I'm going to shout out to them. So, Tiana, uh, Big B, which was the producer I mentioned. The show. Stoney, which you are. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Stoney, man. Yeah, those are my co hosts. And then D Hawk, um, that's another co host. And then um, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. That, getting ready for Nader's life. And okay. Just trying to. Do things right and stay on the straight and narrow path. For sure. Okay, man. Like I said, man, I appreciate you coming to you spending some time with my show, man. And we got to do this to catch up with you in the near future. See what else you're working on again, though. Again, it's your boy Pro Up Daddy, man. You just got to rock with us on the Third Coast Avenue show, man. Stay tuned every Friday from 11 to 11 30 on YouTube and Access Vision, man. And we're going to keep it locked and have more uh, uh, videos for you, man. Stay tuned. I'm is Mr. Freezer Sub Zero. I guess I'll be that villain. I can't be no kid's hero. Weezy going to game looking for an heir. Go and breathe it in. Let it in. Feel clear. Time to make money, make money, money. Oh. Time to make money, make money, money. Oh. Weezy going to game looking for an heir. Go and breathe it in. Let it in. Feel clear. Time to make money, make money, money. Oh. Time to make money, make money.